Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about driving. I'm not sure if you own a car or if you sometimes rent a car but driving is something that most humans do at some point in their lives. If you don't drive a car, I'm sure you've ridden in a car at some point in your life. In this English lesson, I'll talk about a whole bunch of different things that you might experience when you are driving. These are things that might happen on your way to work. They might happen on your way to school. It might be something that you see or notice when you are driving. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson about driving. Traffic jam. So, this is the first thing I'm going to talk about. Luckily, I live in an area where I don't experience this very often but sometimes when I go to the city, sometimes when I go to Toronto, I end up in a traffic jam. A traffic jam is a situation where traffic is either moving very slowly or traffic is not moving at all. Maybe there's an accident up ahead. Maybe one of the lanes of the highway is closed and everyone has to merge into one lane. Traffic jams can be very, very frustrating. You really have to pay attention when you are in a traffic jam so that you know when to go and when to stop. Because you don't want to cause another car accident. When you are in a traffic jam, we also use the phrase stuck in traffic. Sometimes when you go to a meeting, when I go to a meeting in the city, sometimes I'm late because I was stuck in traffic. So, you can see this gentleman here is not very happy. He is stuck in traffic. You can see the lady in the car beside him is checking her watch because she's probably going to be late for work or late for an appointment because she is stuck in traffic. Um no one is happy when they're stuck in traffic. Okay, maybe that that's not true. Maybe you can listen to your favorite music or listen to an English podcast when you're stuck in traffic. Maybe that would make you happy. We also use the term stop and go. When you say that you are in stop and go traffic, it means exactly that. The traffic stops and then the traffic goes and then the traffic stops and then the traffic goes and then the traffic stops and then the traffic goes. It's very similar to being in a traffic jam. It's the same thing. Um stop and go traffic can be very, very frustrating as well. Um Jen and I went on a trip uh last fall and we The GPS said there was an accident ahead but we didn't get off the highway and we ended up in stop and go traffic for an hour. We also describe it's a lot of uh phrases for traffic jams, isn't it? Uh we describe it as bumper to bumper traffic. So, the bumper is what you have on the front and the back of a car. The piece that um if you were to hit another vehicle, you would hit bumpers, okay? It's kind of the plastic, rubber or metal piece on the front and back of a car. So, when we say it is bumper to bumper traffic, we mean that people are almost touching, okay? So, you could say, oh, I was late for work yesterday because I was in bumper to bumper traffic for an hour. It took forever to get to work. So, it's very similar to stop and go for sure. And then, this is something that some people experience when traffic is bad or when another driver does something that makes you a little bit frightened or afraid or angry and it's called road rage. Road rage is when you get angry. I know I mentioned the emotion of fear but road rage is really about anger. Maybe you're driving along and someone almost hits you and you get angry. Maybe you're in traffic. You're stuck in traffic. You're in bumper to bumper traffic for so long, you just get more and more frustrated and eventually you get angry. We call this road rage. Sometimes road rage results in someone committing a crime. Sometimes on the news, you'll hear that someone drove their car and hit someone else's car uh, because they were so angry. They had road rage. So, not a good emotion to have. If you are driving and you are getting angry, it's probably a good idea just to pull over and to relax a little bit. Have a cup of tea. Enjoy the nice spring air and then get back on the highway after you have calmed down. 
So, a couple times a day, we have something called rush hour because a lot of people start uh work at the same time in the morning or around the same time and people get off work around the same time. There's more traffic. So, between 7 and 9 a.m. is rush hour. It's when most people are driving on the highways. It's when you're most likely to experience a traffic jam or to get stuck in traffic. Also, between probably 3.30 and 6 o'clock at night is rush hour again. It's when everyone is going home. So, in English, rush means to do something quickly. You know, when I rush through my lesson, I talk really fast. Um so, rush hour is when everyone's trying to get to work and when everyone's trying to get home again. Jen and I try to drive when it's not rush hour if we need to go on the highway or if we're going through or to the city. It's just better to drive when no one is on the highway. In fact, there's something called to beat the rush. Sometimes on a Friday, people will leave work. They'll come into work really early in the morning and they'll try and leave work. You see this one vehicle? There's only one vehicle going one way and a couple vehicles in a moment going the other way. These people probably left work early to beat the rush. I knew someone who lived here and taught at a high school in Toronto and he would leave at 4 a.m. to go to work to beat the rush and he would finish his school day at two o'clock and leave to beat the rush. So, when you try to beat the rush, it means you leave early. Some people do this when they go and watch a sports game. They'll leave the game before it's over to beat the rush. Sometimes you'll see people on TV leaving the arena or stadium and the game's not over but they want to beat the rush. They want to leave before everyone else leaves. And then this is the thing you don't want to have happen. You do not want to get into a car accident. We sometimes call it a car crash or just a crash. A car accident is when one car hits another car. You can see these two gentlemen, they have just been in a car accident. It looks like the older gentleman rear-ended the younger gentleman. When you hit a car from behind, I don't have this word in the vocabulary lift list but it looks like he rear-ended that person. Um a car accident is not a nice thing. Thankfully, cars are much safer these days. I think because of airbags and because of how cars are designed, you're less likely to get injured in a car accident but certainly, a car accident is not a nice experience especially if you get hurt. Um so, hopefully, none of you uh, have any car accidents in the future or ever. So, you have to watch this video clip for a bit. This guy is going to run over the curb. You see how he went off the road and he he's going to run over the grass and he's going to run over the curb. In English, when you say that someone runs over something, if you run over something with your car, it means it goes under your car. You can run over garbage. You can run over a pop can. You can accidentally run over animals or people. I don't wanna talk about that but whenever you see something on the road ahead, let's say there's um what did I run over the other day? Someone threw a pop bottle out of the car and then uh, I ran over the pop bottle. So, past tense. So, when you're driving, you don't want to run over anything. You want to be careful but this guy, he for some reason, he is um if you watch him, he will run over the grass. Right now, as soon as you see right now, he is going to run over the grass and then he kind of ran over the curb as well. This you never want to have happen and I could not find a video of this actually happening. It's very, very dangerous but if you are in a head-on collision, or if you hit someone head on, it means the fronts of both cars hit each other. This technically isn't quite a head on collision because the cars, they're not quite lined up, the toy cars. So, generally, a head on collision is when someone coming from the other way hits you and the fronts of both cars hit. It is probably the most dangerous type of accident. If you are in a head on collision, you will most likely be injured or it will be very, very serious indeed. But definitely, um when you're out driving, you want to drive carefully. You want to drive cautiously. 
and you want to avoid getting into any kind of collision especially a head-on collision. Sometimes though, you just get into what's called a fender bender. If you look at the dent in this car, the dent is kind of on the bumper but also around the side of the car, it's also part of the fender. So, the bumper is the piece along the front. The fender is the piece around the wheels on the side. And when you have an accident that's somewhat minor where no one's really injured but your car gets a dent in it, we call it a fender bender. It rhymes. So, it's kind of a fun word to say. Um I was in a fender bender once. It was my own fault though. I turned too sharp and I I kinda hit another car. But uh, yes, a fender bender. Um so often if you say to someone, oh, I got in a small accident on the way to work and if someone says, did anyone get hurt? And you might say, no, it was just a fender bender. You might even say minor, just a minor fender bender. Minor means like not that big of a deal. So, I couldn't find a good video of this but when you cut someone off, if you watch the black truck right there. So, he's not really close enough to the video to the car in the video but when you cut someone off, it means you pass them and then you move in front of them really quickly and you don't leave very much space. Let me stop this video. It's going a little too quickly. Um this person, it's not a good example but I would say the black vehicle has cut off the I think it's a Tesla, isn't it? This is a Tesla. So, when you have two vehicles and one moves in front really, really quickly without much space between the two vehicles, we would say that you cut someone off. Cut off. Um and then this is not a great example either. This is someone who is tailgating. When you tailgate someone, it means you follow them and you're really, really close to them. So, it's different than bumper to bumper. So, when you tailgate, it means you're driving, you're moving along and the one vehicle is right behind the other vehicle. So, when you tailgate someone, you follow someone with your car and you follow them too closely. Run a red light. So, I had to edit this video a little bit. (laughs) It was actually, I don't know if you can see my elite video editing skills. It was actually the original video. It was a green light. So, I changed it to a red light. I put a red dot on it. You run a red light. It means that you're driving along and you see a stoplight and it's red and you're supposed to stop. In Canada, when you see a red light, you're supposed to stop. But if you go through it, we say that you are running a red light. You should never run a red light. It is a bad idea. So, don't run a red light. Always a bad thing to do. And this is something you should never do. This is extremely dangerous. This is very, very bad and it's called drunk driving. If you do this, you endanger the life of other people. If you do this, it means you are consuming beverages that have alcohol in them and you are not capable of driving safely. Don't ever do this. It is illegal in almost every country in the world and it is not a good thing to do. Um and if you do this and you get caught, you will probably get a DUI which means driving under the influence or it might be a DWI in your country, driving while intoxicated. But certainly, in Canada, there are severe, severe punishments for this. You will lose your license. You might even go to jail if you hurt someone. So, when you back out, when you are in a driveway and you back out of the driveway, it means that your car is facing your house and you are going in reverse. So, if you are in a driveway and you back out of the driveway, you are going backwards. So, this is the opposite then of to pull into. Uh when you pull pull into your driveway, you're on the road and you've decided to go into the driveway in front of your house. So, you pull into your driveway. If you're in your driveway and you decide to leave, you back out of your driveway but in this situation, you can see this person has decided to pull into their driveway. So, they pull into their driveway park their car, get out, get their groceries out 
etcetera, etcetera. So, if you are facing away from your house, you can pull out of your driveway or you can pull out. You can use both versions of the verb. So, when I park my car, I will often back in and then I will pull out when I'm ready to leave. It's just an easier way to do it. Um I like parking this way because then I don't have to think too much when I leave my house. Sometimes when you back out of your driveway, you have to look in your mirrors and it's a little trickier. But when you pull out of your driveway or when you pull out, you can see where you're going and you can drive forward. So, just a quick review again. When you back out, you go backwards. When you pull into, you drive into your driveway. And when you pull out of your driveway, it means you're driving out. Sometimes when you're driving along the road, you will see these. These are pylons. When you see pylons, you know there is most likely construction happening somewhere. So, when you're driving along and you see pylons, you know that there's construction ahead. You should slow down. In Canada, they are always orange. <laughs> or mostly they're orange. They are always orange. So, when you're driving along and you see pylons, you know that you need to stop. You know or stop or at least slow down so that you don't hit something or don't do something that would endanger other people. So, if you're driving along and you see a pylon, you know that you should be more cautious with your driving. Parallel parking. So, I don't have a video for this one. It was very hard to find one. I couldn't find one but when you parallel park, you are in the city and you are driving along and you can back your car into a parking spot. So, you have a car, you back your car into a parking spot and you park. I think it's called parallel parking because you start by pulling up beside someone and then you back beside them. So, when you start, your cars are parallel to each other. Um this is something that was very difficult for me to learn. It's very hard for me to learn how to parallel park. So, um I did eventually learn how to do it but I usually look for a parking spot where I don't have to parallel park. Where I can just drive in and not have to think about it. And this is something that is illegal almost everywhere in the world. It's called double parking. This is something you do when you park beside someone. So, you're driving your car and you park. They're already parked on the side of the road and then you park beside them. So, not a nice thing to do. Double parking is illegal. Even if you put your hazard lights on, those are the little flashing lights that <laughs> that um are usually amber or orange on the corners of your vehicle. So, do not double park. Never a nice thing to do. Uh sometimes when you are driving, you need to pull over. Sometimes the police will pull you over. So, notice you can decide to pull over. That's when you're on the road and you go on to the side of the road. This person decided to pull over. Sometimes when you're driving, the police will be behind you and you'll hear their siren and light. You'll see their lights and then you need to pull over and you would then say, the police pulled me over. You don't want to get pulled over but sometimes you decide to pull over. Do you understand the difference? If I was tired, I would pull over and I would just rest for a bit. Uh maybe get out of the car and and stretch a little before I kept driving. If I was speeding, the police might pull me over. In the city, you might see a crosswalk. Usually, these are marked with some kind of white lines. A crosswalk is a place where people can walk across the road. Usually, there's a light that says they're allowed to walk across. A little person, a little light and usually, there's a stoplight and the light will be red. So, a crosswalk is a place where people will cross the road. A crossing guard is someone who helps school aged children cross the road safely. You can see this crossing guard has a stop sign in their hand and these children want to cross the road. Kids can cross the road by themselves but it's much safer when um a crossing guard helps them. So, usually in the morning and at night when I go to town, 
there are crossing guards in different places in town to help large groups of kids walk across the road so they can get safely to school. I think it's probably a nice job in the fall and spring but I think it's probably um not as nice in the middle of the winter because they do this every day. Crossing guards are out there every day. But yes, a little stop sign helping kids cross the road. An intersection. By the way, you can see the white lines which are the crosswalk at this intersection. An intersection is a place where two roads or maybe more than two roads uh cross or you could say it's where four roads meet or streets. Uh an intersection is a place where maybe in the city roads or streets run north south and east west and wherever those roads cross we would call that an intersection. Usually there are stoplights at an intersection. Sometimes it's just a stop sign um but an intersection is a place where you either go straight or you decide to turn left or right. In Canada or at least in my part of Canada, we have started to build what's called a roundabout. Roundabouts are places where you don't have to stop if you don't see any traffic. You can kind of just keep going. You always in Canada move to the right and go around the roundabout and then you get off on the proper road. Um we just received or got a roundabout in our local town a few years ago. So, it took everyone a while to get used to it. I know roundabouts are quite common in some of your countries but in my area, it was something new for some people. So, some people weren't sure how to use it properly. But a roundabout, I like them. Um I think it actually helps me. I don't I think I can I think I can go through that intersection faster now because there is a roundabout. So, this is something you should never do. You should never fall asleep while driving. If you are asleep at the wheel, it will cause an accident. But this English phrase is actually used for times when you're not driving. If someone is in charge of a company and things go wrong because they weren't running the company right, someone might say, oh, they were asleep at the wheel. If the government decides, if the government doesn't do something, so it's when there's inaction, you might say, oh, they were asleep at the wheel. Um if students, um let's say I wasn't paying attention and students snuck out of my classroom when I was looking out the window, um later the principal could say, were you asleep at the wheel? So, it's not just when you're driving. Uh it can also be any situation where someone isn't paying attention to what they're doing. So, literal translation, you fall asleep while driving. Also used as a phrase to describe when someone isn't paying attention when they are in charge. And then we also have another phrase, backseat driver. So, if someone sits in the back seat and tells you how to drive, we call them a backseat driver. But we also use this phrase in other situations. Let's say I'm teaching a class and another teacher keeps telling me how to do it and they're not the teacher. I would say they're a backseat driver. So, when you're in charge of something, when you're the leader and someone who's not the leader keeps telling you how to do your job, we sometimes refer to that person as a backseat driver. <laughs> 